pro-life groups are celebrating as abortion advocates declare that 2021 is on track to become the most anti-abortion state legislative session in decades. The Guttmacher Institute, a pro-abortion research group, reveals last week that more than 530 pro-life bills have been introduced in 46 states already this year. 61 of those bills have become law. Today we're taking action to protect the most vulnerable amongst us, the unborn. We are celebrating life. One example of this pro-life state effort is in Montana, where last week Republican Governor Greg Gianforte signed three landmark pro-life bills into law. These new laws ban abortion after five months of pregnancy, require an ultrasound be administered before a woman gets an abortion, and enacts safeguards to protect women from the dangers of abortion pills. Joining us now on Skype is Montana Governor Greg Gianforte. Governor, welcome to the show. I understand similar pro-life measures were previously blocked by former Governor Steve Bullock. You assumed the governor's office this January. Were these pro-life bills a priority for you? Yeah, Catherine, thanks for having me on. And absolutely, uh, our, we have a Republican House and a Republican Senate. They had been passing pro-life legislation only to see it blocked by 16 years of Democrat governors, uh, no more. I recently signed three bills into law to protect the unborn. And Catherine, we know life is precious and it needs to be protected. Governor, can you speak to how these new laws will help to protect women in your state? Your critics claim they will interfere with women's health and will harm low-income rural and Native American residents. Well, I, I ran as a pro-life candidate. Uh, we're going to defend the most vulnerable, and no one is more vulnerable than a child in the womb. Uh, so the three measures we signed into law, the first one uh, requires a doctor be involved if you're going to do a chemical abortion. Mm -hmm. There's been a trend towards tele-abortions. This leaves women uh, alone, often with severe complications. We're not going to allow that to happen in Montana. The second bill, HB 136, make it makes it's the pain capable uh, bill. This outlaws third trimester uh, abortions. This is when a child can actually feel pain and in many cases is a viable human being at that point. We shouldn't allow that. That's now law in Montana. And the third measure, HB 140, uh, requires that anyone doing an abortion show the mother uh, a, uh, uh, a scan of the baby mm -hmm. and allow her the option of listening to the fetal heartbeat. Uh, we, this has been shown to save lives. That's also now law in Montana. Governor, the pro-life movement would obviously like to see the Supreme Court chip away and ultimately overturn Roe versus Wade, but it will require the Supreme Court to take up an abortion case. Is it a goal of yours for maybe one of these laws to be challenged in the court and ultimately brought to the Supreme Court? Well, that, that's a grand plan. I know a lot of people are talking about that. We, I signed these bills into law because they're going to save lives here in Montana. And I just want to give a big shout out to all the people that have advocated for the unborn. Uh, there's many, the Susan B. Anthony list, activists here in the state. Uh, we had a great victory. These bills have historically gotten vetoed here. Uh, not anymore. I signed them into law. Governor, 61 pro-life bills have been signed into law this year already at the state level because of governors such as yourself taking action on them. Governor, with a pro-abortion president right now, President Joe Biden, and a pro-abortion majority in Congress, do you believe the pro-life battle needs to focus on the state level right now? What do you make of your role in the pro-life movement, especially during a Biden-Harris administration? Well, it's, it's scary what we see coming out of Washington. Uh, the pro-abortion agenda, uh, the, uh, the election reforms, the open borders. I think the line of defense at this point is at the state level. Uh, I have always been uh, unabashedly pro-life because I think we need to protect the most vulnerable. Uh, and we've taken steps here in Montana to make sure that's the case. You were previously a U.S. representative here in Washington, D.C. Do you think that you have more leverage now as governor for the pro-life movement and can make more of a difference in your role now? 
Well, I was honored to serve as Montana's lone voice in Congress for three and a half years. Uh, I got pretty good at voting no back there, uh, but I will tell you, as the chief executive for the state, I'm in a much better position to further a uh, pro-life agenda. Governor Greg Gianforte of Montana, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on the success of these pro-life laws. Well, Catherine, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. And joining us now is Mallory Quigley, Vice President of Communications for the Susan B. Anthony List. Mallory, good to see you. It really seems that pro-life governors are having a moment right now. You're spot on, Catherine, and it's because of the, uh, the election results, especially from um, this most recent election, you know, like Governor Gene Forte said, Steve Bullock blocked those common sense measures that have been passed repeatedly by the state legislature. And finally, we have someone who's going to sign them into law. And it's it's a really exciting time. The, the states absolutely are uh, where the line of defense is right now, especially as we see increasing pro-abortion policies mm -hmm. coming out of Washington. Well, as you said, it is an exciting time. In fact, there have been more than 530 pro-life bills introduced this year so far. The Guttmacher Institute calls that disastrous. Mm -hmm. uh, give us your take on what we're seeing right now and what this all means for the pro-life movement. Sure, sure. And 61 signed into law, and it's just the beginning of May, as mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think two things are happening right now. State legislators who have been on a tear, pro-life tear, uh, I mean that in the best way, for the last several years, passing pro-life laws, they've see, they're seeing two things right now. Mm -hmm. They see the shift in the courts, thanks to the Trump-Pence administration, and they see the onslaught of pro-abortion policies coming out of Washington. For example, um, the FDA choosing, under the guidance of the Biden-Harris administration, to stop safety regulations previously uh, in effect for chemical abortion. Montana now has laws protecting women. Oklahoma will soon have laws protecting women from these chemical abortion drugs. Um, and so that, that's really important. They're trying to act, uh, you know, go on offense before they have to play defense against the federal government. And then with the courts, um, more than 200 judges appointed to the lower courts under Trump-Pence, in addition to the three Supremes, as we, as, as we mm -hmm. know. And I think that state legislators are seeing there's an opportunity here. The court, the Supreme Court, is going to have to address the abortion issue sooner or later. They're really on a, uh, it's, there's a, a clock running yeah. until they have to deal with it. And the state legislators are giving as many options to the court system as, as they can. That will be really interesting to watch. Mallory, what do you think this wave of pro-life bills signals about American beliefs and attitudes towards abortion, uh, especially amidst the Biden-Harris administration and their aggressive abortion agenda? Yes, well, the closer you get to the people, the more you are seeing the will of the people in action. Mm -hmm. um, so state legislators are, are acting on the will of the people who elected them. They received a mandate to go and to pass pro-life law and policy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, many states in recent years have done state amendments to the state constitution where it was the people directly deciding our state's not going to have a right to abortion, not going to have a right to taxpayer-funded abortion. So we're seeing growing pro-life sentiment. Abortions are down. Women are increasingly choosing life. And they want to see pro-life policy that reflects their will. It's the court that's holding us back, the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. Um, and so that it's really encouraging to see state legislators and governors respond so enthusiastically to the will of the people. Absolutely. We only have a minute left, Mallory, but what would you like to say to our viewers how they as pro-lifers can support pro-life efforts in their own state? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, people may be discouraged because of the Biden-Harris administration, but as Governor Gene Forte uh, reminds us, there are opportunities at the state level now more than ever before. So lobby your state representatives. Find out what pro-life bills are in committee in your state. Uh, does your state have a pain-capable and born child protection act? Does it have protections for women uh, from chemical abortion drugs? There's a lot of new things that state legislators can do, uh, particularly on the chemical abortion front, that, that we need um, action on. Get educated and then take action. Mallory, quickly, so good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Catherine.